I've been traveling my whole life. I took my very first steps on the boat that I lived on for two years. In comparison to me, the ship was huge and served as my very own private playground. Back on land, I've had the chances to visit most of the continents. The only ones missing are South America and Australia, which hopefully one day I'll be able to explore. The first records of traveling date back to the first great human migration. Our early ancestors, known as Homo erectus, saw it fit to gradually leave Africa and colonize other parts of the world. It was suggested that their increasing body sizes, reliance on animal food, and increased range size were part of a web of factors that led to the migration. Nowadays, that made different reasons why someone would go traveling. Some did for the opportunity to meet new people, to go on adventures, as well as exploring areas of the globe that one hasn't been nor seen before. You can also travel to visit family and loved ones, gain knowledge on other parts of the world, where you can pick up new languages, learn about other customs, as well as train out the variety of food that's available. Or you can just go traveling to get away from the stress of the daily life. Whilst on holiday, I got to learn about another country and the wonders it has to offer. Hong Kong is a very beautiful country with lots of green, and if you walk into a park, you can see just how pretty it is from the masses of trees, the waterfalls, water lily ponds, as well as the beautiful architecture. Hong Kong is very clean. The gardens and beaches are pollution free, and so are the train stations. The trains in Hong Kong are different to the ones in England. At home, we have more than one rail system for the overground and the underground, whereas there's only one system in Hong Kong that does everything. The MTR, which stands for Mass Transit Railway, is built like our tubes and shows up within two to five minutes. There's a special queuing up system that you have to follow to be able to get on. There are three outline sections. The two sections on the sides are for the passengers waiting to get on the MTR, whilst the middle one is for the passengers getting off. Another difference between Hong Kong and England is for the love of escalators and shopping centres that they have, you are bound to find them pretty much everywhere you go. There's a place in central Hong Kong that has roughly 20 minutes worth of escalators, which are used by approximately 30,000 to 40,000 people per day. Not only does it provide a transit link for the residents, but it's also a convenient way to see the bustling city hillside, which contains restaurants and shops. Since Hong Kong has many islands, buses and MTRs aren't the only modes of transportation. The ferry, known as the Star Ferry, is a popular choice. Unlike the buses or MTRs, it allows you to enjoy a calm and relaxing journey from one harbour to another whilst being in the open air. You don't have to go very far to get a nice view of Hong Kong. You just simply need to find a high point and enjoy the view. If you want to be adventurous, you can always participate in one of the many hikes available. One of the free ones is the 10,000 Buddha hike, which is pretty much self-explanatory. As you walk up the stairs to the monastery, you are surrounded on each side of the steps by a variety of golden statues. And once you get to the top, you can indulge on the paramount view of the city, as well as appreciating the religious aspect of it all. However, if you're feeling a bit lazy, you can always find a rooftop where you can witness the view as the sun sets over the city.